actually really He was actually shocking. playing Burroughs also. So we could have had a uh, Erasmus. We've got on the left, AJ Soccer. Sacker? I always say that wrong. Soccer. Yeah. Like the sport. AJ has a, uh, a monkey on his shirt. Now, one thing to, you know, I think, remember from, um, I believe it was Kansas. We what? saw, in Kansas, we saw the Cold Author Red deck that day um, floating at the top of the tables. And it was the same person that had played it at the States, you know, earlier. And that was the person, I think, that proved that it was a good deck. And I wish I could remember... Uh, which player it was that had been playing that deck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Cadotha Red has been floating around for a bit around the internet, but I don't think it's until the introduction of Signal Pest and Contested Warzone that the deck became the tier one monster that I think it, I think it is right now. Well, Chris Anderson and I... Uh, played a while back at U.S. Nationals, maybe about three years ago, and he just really impressed me as a, as a player. He's one of those people that... He's good? Yeah, he thinks about his plays. It's tight. He's, he's <laughs> willing to play many different kinds of archetypes. You know, um, I think he's in that same school like Jerry Thompson is where he prefers to play a control deck, but he is not afraid to p play a deck out of the normal path for him because he thinks it's a good one, you know, like... Yeah, I mean, Chris is master. I, I 100% agree with you. I, uh, I did a Ravnica Guild Pack Dissension draft with him in uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico last year, and I, I like, never lose at RGD, ever. <laughs> and, and he beat me. He outplayed me. It was pretty upsetting. We played old combat. It's RGD. You have to. <laughs> Otherwise, you like kill from reality and all those cards. Like we played all the rules. I think when you go to those those um, archaic format decks, it's sometimes better to do that just for those very reasons. Yeah, because I mean the, the whole draft format was like, like it, if you use new rules, it doesn't work. That's the whole. Like now they design sets with those things in mind, but back then they did not. Okay, so. Just remembering what AJ's deck looks like, I think that Chris has got a really big edge here. I mean, if AJ, if AJ wins the die roll, which he did not, <laughs> and has a black sun in it. And AJ is mulligan. He has no lines. Or he has I think top switch. <laughs> Chris has a pretty good opener. Is that Galvanic Blast in Chris's hand? Maybe. I mean, the uh, the deck that was played in Kansas City did run Galvanic Blast. Um, in the testing I did, I had more than we had galvanic blast in the deck for a while and i had more than one game where i would have won the game if galvanic blast was lightning bolt and in over the course of you know a, a smallish number of games and we switched to lightning bolt and the number of times where if it was galvanic blast we would have won but we didn't because it was lightning bolt was zero after like 30 games so we ended up thinking that bolt was just strictly superior it might be different now that we've got Pest in, unless you're talking about post-Pest. Oh, I'm talking about post-Pest. Okay. So we've got the turn one rebirth. And let's see what he's going to use here. MTG Mom? Is that Yoda? Those are pro player cards. I thought I saw a Yoda there at the front. Oh, no. It's <laughs> Neil Reeves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... Oh, I'm sorry, Neil. You're the, one of the most awesome players I've ever known, but <laughs> the glare got me. <laughs> oh, contest. Six. Let's 
chop your life down to a third of where it was. I pretty much feel like if there's not a ratchet bomb here, it's over. Six. And he's got nothing left in his hand. Nothing left at all. Yeah, Not yeah, no. He just, this is... Look, he, all he did was play a Kadaltha Rebirth and play some lands, and his opponent is dead on turn four. That's all he did. <laughs> in they come. Hit for seven. Go to one. You go to one. Okay, Black Sun Zenith for two. Nope. Yep. There One we go. Spell. That's all it takes. Nice job, Wizard. And that's what Kadolta Red does. Make it cost zero. Yeah. And make it add mana to your mana. Really good I don't think he should have cast that Ornithopter unless he knows AJ's deck. Just because it doesn't actually make his clock any faster. But. On the other side of it, it does mean that a ratchet bomb could really tear him up. Yes. I mean, it didn't matter because he does not have the ratchet bomb. And maybe he knows that. You know, these guys are friendly enough that it's possible that they've already played a bunch of games and know what he ha each other has. Kyle for any Your giraffe is ready to move on. Yeah. I mean, both these guys know each other. I don't know how well they know each other, but. Right, right. Okay, so it looks like Jinxed Idol is coming in for Chris Anderson, and you and I talked about this um, sideboard choice before. Whether we're not sure whether it's appropriate. Um, uh, you know, I Ben Hayes spoke to me a little bit ago, and Ben Hayes said that he that he thinks it's definitely the right card for that slot. And you know, maybe maybe I had inbred testing. Maybe I was playing against decks where that card wasn't good because I didn't think it. I didn't think it was very good against decks like Blue White Control because I was playing against Cargo, and right. they had stuff like, and those those were the control decks that I was playing against. So, I mean, it's just that's absolutely fair. Yeah, it's it's not good against some control decks, but it's very good against others. That looks like a uh, goblin war caller. So I definitely see uh, Jinxed Idol. I, I wonder, do you think that he's playing um, a deck that is basically the same build as Jerry Thompson's then? Um, probably. Right, right. Although, you know what? I. Actually, probably not. Chris Anderson's Chris Anderson probably built okay. Chris Anderson's deck. Okay. Or maybe Chris Anderson built Jerry Thompson's deck. That's also very possible. You know, it does look very similar. That was just my thought. It had it. The, some of the same uh, some of the same cards, some of the same card sideboard choices, and a lot of that is um, what's the phrase? A, a lot of that is just kind of parallel development. It can be natural to go to the same spot with somebody, you know what I mean? But it doesn't necessarily um, mean that they're the same designer, you know, just that the, the deck, the cards, all of that forces you into the same spot. And how good is Signal Pest? <laughs> <laughs> It's at least okay. I know, it's hilarious because it's, these cards are horrible. 
<laughs> Here I am just musing about how awful they are. All of them. So post board, AJ's matchup does get better, and AJ gets to be on the play this game. Yes. So I, I would not be surprised if AJ was able to steal game two. Oh, I'm not, uh, it's more about game three for me. You know, he has to win game two. So for the sake of argument, let's say that he does. Then we go to game three, and Chris is on the draw or on the play, and I, I wonder, even with AJ's resistance, how much of an edge that on the play gives. Because I believe AJ has access to three disfigure after board, has three go for the throat, and has three black sun zenith, and only one vampire nighthawk. Uh, yes, it's one. This was one rush bomb. Okay, Inquisition is a really great opener for him. Land, land, Chimeric Idol. I think that that's a pest, a signal pest. Ornithopter. I can't make out the next one. I think I see a Goblin Bushwhacker. Yes, a Bushwhacker. Wow, that's a really good hand. <laughs> Rebirth, Bushwhacker, Bushwhacker, Ornithopter, Chimeric Idol. Signal pass mountain. Shame you need to play that developer. So Pest Thopter can attack for one. It's impressive stuff. Kicked bushwhacker turns that one into three, four, five, six. How they do. That's how this <laughs> deck bites, man. Rashad says, if only this deck were green. I don't know. When Groundbreaker was around, it didn't see much play. <laughs> Are you talking about that really awesome deck with the uh, green, green three guy? Make a, make a huge elemental? What does it do? The the legend that had discard um, his a copy of himself. Okay, oh, that guy is awesome, Baru, Baru Fist of Krosa. Rashad did have a Baru deck that was awesome. I and like, so I like Baru. we've got Chris Anderson kicking, coming across for even more. Turn that six into good God. Six becomes nine. Yeah. Okay, mana leak. A card that I don't know that I would keep in in this matchup. You have to summons. If you know the leaks, like. What has he got there? One. Black, Black Sun, Sun Zenith nice. for one. And it looks like that Zenith is in his yard. Um, chimeric Mass? Or... There we go. <clears throat> he's, he's just constantly forgetting that. It's happened to him multiple times while we've watched. It's hard to remember. Yeah, Lou was just saying that it was hard for him to remember. Yeah. I never really had problems forgetting to put that five damage beacon back in. Beacon of Destruction, I always remember to put it back in. <laughs> but if you're just blowing up some creatures, I'm sure it might be easier to forget. Okay. Chimeric Mass for three. Actually, a very difficult card uh, to handle if he's got Grasp for the Throat and Disfigure as his primary Elam spells. Yeah, yeah. it doesn't seem. Uh... Here it comes. Swing for four. Seven. And that looks like a. Is that a Disfigure?
in his hand does, does did AJ just draw a disfigure? Okay. So he's got a disfigure, a grave titan, a mana leak, and I think a land. On the other side of the table, AJ's five lands in play is versus Chimeric Mass for three, Ornithopter with a minus one, minus one token on it, two mountains, and a contested war zone. I think we're going to see a Koldatha Rebirth here on that very, very weak Ornithopter. Oh, nope. Oh, no. I mean, Just hit for four? Yeah, he had it last turn. Okay. I mean, he's not going to bite. Oh, okay. There's no reason. When I saw him reorganize his board position, I thought that's what he was doing when he was reorganizing it, but it was just to move his creature into a different position. Disfigure to gain two life. That's what AJ must be contemplating right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's there's very nothing, reasonable. There's well, nothing wrong with it. Bolt. Does he have a creeping tar pit in play or anything like where... I don't think he does. No. Yeah, just gain two life. If that's a land, he gets to play a Grave Titan. In his hand, I mean. Oh. Is that a swamp in his hand? No. Jinx title. Tempest, Jinx title. No, no, I mean, I mean in uh, AJ's hand. No. That is a uh, worm coil engine. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. His hand is a worm coil, grave type, and mana leak. This is a rough spot. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yep. I think that's, uh, that's it. He can do kicked bushwhacker, follow up with jinx idol, double threat. But if he does that, he does not get the uh, chimeric idol. Yeah, I mean, he has to come out. Yeah. Yeah. Swings for... Just three, leaves the chimeric idol back as the threat. Swings for four. Oh, nope. It's just three. Chimeric Idol gets the mana leak. <laughs> Down to two. Is that a spreading seas? A preordain? I think that's it. I think it's a... Unless he gets something off the top here. The land he needed a long time ago. Yeah. There we are. Yeah, and Chris Anderson takes <laughs> it.